Hello, you guys. So today we're going to do uh, some more canning using uh, Bounty from the Garden. Um, today it's going to be cucumbers. We did have to go buy some bell peppers. I never grow these. I don't know why I don't, but here in Oregon they just kind of come out small, unlike our jalapenos that come out huge. I should actually think about putting some of these in. Anyway, today we're making a uh, sweet relish. It's also uh, known as hamburger relish or hot dog relish. It's a pretty sweet, sweet relish, and I cut back on the amount of sugar. But uh, isn't that just like the perfect size jar? It's a pint, but it's one of those squatty fat ones. It's a Presto brand. We're using um, the small ball book, Guide to Preserving, just the skinny one. And I am using the recipe off page 54. Let's see if you can see that with me. I'm using the sweet pickle relish. Here's the recipe. I always make notes uh, when I make something out of the book. And uh, I encourage you to do that too. This is also a recipe that you could certainly use up green tomatoes in if you needed to put in some green tomatoes into this. I would just take out some of the, the green pepper and add in some green tomatoes. But as usual, uh, one of this recipe in the ball book calls for one quart chopped cucumbers. Looking at cucumbers like this, I have no idea how much of a quart this is going to be chopped, which means we need to get chopping. I am using some older cukes as well, and what I'll do is just peel off this yellow skin, and then I'll give the flesh a taste. If it tastes good, I will use it. If it tastes bitter, I won't. So right now, I can't tell you how much we're going to make or how many pints it's going to use because I don't know how much we have. So I'm going to get to chopping, peeling, and I'll whiz it up in the processor, and um, yeah, we're going to get started on making some good hamburger relish. Alright, so now I've got a uh, one quart measuring Pyrex, and now that all these are done, I'm going to figure out how much I actually have. So down in the sink here, I have another bowl. So I'm going to fill, dump, fill, dump. You know how that goes. So that is definitely close enough to two quarts. I'm going to end up salting this and draining the water off, so I'm just going to um, get rid of that water through a, a colander, and then I'm going to, well, let's consult the recipe, right? So it calls for one quart of chopped cucumbers, and we have two quarts, so we're going to double all the other ingredients. So I'm going to need four cups of onions, two sweet, uh, well, green bell peppers, and one or two uh, red peppers. I gotta remember to double all this stuff. So now we're going to wash and then chop up those peppers in the food processor just like we did the cucumbers. And then the onions and then we salt everything for a couple hours in cold water.
All right, so I've got cucumber, green pepper, red pepper, and onion in this bowl. And can you see how much water there is in there? So to make relish, they want us to extract even more water. So this recipe calls for me to add a cup of canning and pickling salt. Now the only reason I'm using canning and pickling salt is because I happen to have some. If I didn't, I would use sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, or kosher salt. Any salt that does not have that um, iodization in it. Am I saying that right? I haven't used any of that, like the regular Morton salt, for years. So, um, anyway, that can change the consistency of the color and the texture of the food. Although, it won't hurt you. So, we'll add in the salt, and we give this a mix. And then a strange step is then we cover everything with cold water. Isn't that weird? So, everything will get soaked in cold water and then we let that stand for two hours and then while that's standing we go ahead and we're going to um, mix up our syrup our brine if you will for uh, the pickling itself I don't like some of the spices and herbs so I've removed them from the recipe but I'll review the whole thing with you. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just um, cover this. It's not going to take very much water since there's so much fluid coming out of everything already. So, I mean, stuff's floating. That's good enough. Let's take a, yeah, see that? So now we're going to put a timer on for two hours. And during that time, I'm going to get my jars ready. I'm going to um, clean up and then get the uh, brine going. Okay, so we're going to start putting the brine together and it calls for celery and mustard seed and it calls for four cups because we've doubled the recipe of apple cider vinegar. Now my issue here is that what's in this jar is actually homemade, My uh, mine my apple cider vinegar and I don't know what percentage this is of acid so to be shelf stable you're supposed to can only with um, five percent or greater acid so what I'm gonna do is do three cups of white so I know the acid content and then one cup of mine for flavor and one of these days I should figure out how to measure this the acidity of my own apple cider vinegar but um, nonetheless, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put those ingredients in the pot. Okay, so we've added everything except for the sugar. Now this is kind of a shocking part of the recipe, and remembering we're doubling this recipe. So it actually calls for three and a half cups of sugar. So it's asking us to put in seven cups of sugar. That's more than any other item we have in here. So I'm going to half that. Uh, I'm going to hope that that is going to be sweet enough, but what I'll do is I'll mix it all up. Uh, after the two hours are up, we'll drain off um, all the vegetables, put them in, and then we're going to have to taste it. And what I have here is a uh, jar from last time, so I'll taste um, the sweetness against this last jar. I did not make note of how much sugar I used last time. I doubt very much that I used the amount that it calls for. I almost never do. So, but I didn't write it down. So, you know, if you don't write it down, you don't know. All right, so I'm going to start adding some sugar. So, I said I do half. I'm going to even scrimp on that one. I'm going to do three cups. So let's start with three, two, for a couple reasons. First of all, I'm almost out of sugar in the kitchen, which means I'm going to have to go get a 50 pound bag from storage and a bunch and I still have a, a smidge left but we're gonna mix this up get it up to the boil and uh, see what we got hi guys so this is where things get this recipe has got a lot of little steps in it and they're not really complicated they're just weird so bear with me now this uh, concoction has been sitting in this salt water for a couple hours and we need to drain it we're going to drain it, but we are not going to rinse it. There's no other salt in the recipe, so that's where this gets its salt. So, 
I'm going to drain it in batches into this colander and I'm the only reason I'm saving the liquid and I'm really not I'm, I'm just trying to balance the col the uh, colander in something so I don't have it just like rolling around in the sink so that's why I've got it in this bowl here I'm going to grab a big one of these things and I'm just going to put it in here and let it drain. And that's a huge piece of something I need to chop up, red pepper. You're going to get all different kinds of sizes of things, but obviously um, anything that's too gigantic really should be re-chopped. All right, so putting that in here. I'm going to go drain, strain this, and then I'm going to dump this out. I don't care about that. So I'm going to uh, keep doing this until that's all strained. And then I don't think it's going to fit in this pot where I made the liquid, so I'm going to have to put it into this pot and then boil it together and then into the canner after I put it in jars. But we'll see. We'll see what happens here. So uh, next time you see me, I'll have this all strained. All right, you guys, so I'm already breaking the rules. It said not to strain this or to rinse it, just to strain it and go, but it is way too salty. So I don't care what they say, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm lucky I've got two bowls and two fine sieves. So just wanted to let you know that so when we get back again, we'll continue on. All right, you guys, so that took several rinses, but I got it to where I thought it was fine. Put it into here, into the brine. Remember, we cut the, the amount of salt into less than half. I just gave it a taste. It tastes very sweet to me, so I'm going to leave it at this level. I can't imagine adding four and a half more cups of sugar to this. Three cups is fine. I don't need to have seven, right? Or seven and a half or whatever it was. So this is what we're going to roll with. So now I need to uh, boil this in here for 10 minutes and then we'll jar it, put it into the jars um, and then into the canner. It's a water bath canning method since it's got the vinegar in it. And uh, let's see, how long do we can it for? 10 minutes. So I'm going to assume that you know how to can something. If you don't, you can ask me some questions. And I'll put a link in the description below to a free uh, guide to canning, freezing, preserving food, smoking, and things like that. It's got a lot of recipes in it. It's from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. They uh, do everything above board and all the tested recipes. This recipe, since I've adjusted the sugar and I've adjusted the vinegar, this is no longer an approved recipe. So technically, um, this is for informational purposes only. I am not teaching you how to make relish in your own home. I'm teaching you how I make relish in my home. Sweet pickle relish, hamburger relish, whatever you choose to call it. All right, so now I'm going to clear the decks and get the canning stuff ready. We're going to go through this really quickly because I'm assuming you already know how to can. Quick little break here, you guys. So spur of the moment. I've decided I'm going to add um, some green tomato to one or two of the jars. I want to see how that tastes. Um, I think it's going to be great, so this could be a, a definite easy way to add or to use up some green tomatoes. But you know, I don't want to recommend it until I've tried it myself. So I'm going to grab some odd sized jars and um, that way I'll know that the green tomato is in two jars and we will. Um, taste test that hopefully by the time this video comes out I can give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down on adding the green tomatoes to the recipe. All right, you guys so I've put the relish in these jars these have uh, green tomatoes in them and actually there's more in there too I went ahead and did it but there's more in here. Two-part lid I just wiped it off with um, clear vinegar And because we are putting these into a hot canner, we don't have to be so worried about 
touching the insides of jars and lids and stuff anymore. It used to be if you did, you were going to die, right? But now um, it's not that bad. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to dip. I'll um, fill up a container, wipe the rim with this dipped in white vinegar, and put the two-part lid on, and then I will um, lift these up and put them in the canner. Okay, so we've got all the jars in here. We have two, four, six, eight jars and a little extra, smoosh extra. So we'll just put that inside the refrigerator. And as sometimes happens, I don't have enough water in here to cover up these taller jars, so I'm going to need to add some. Want to cover by a good inch or two. And we start timing when the water comes to a full boil. So I'm going to put the lid on to help it get there. And uh, then we just let it boil for 10 minutes. Easy peasy. Okay, I think we've got a rolling boil here. Rolling boil. Definitely timer. 10 minute. 10 minute, enter. Now there we go. We'll be back in 10 minutes and I'll put the jars out there on a towel. Alright, so our timer's gone off. Turn off the heat. Take off the lid. Jeez, if I can get it quickly. Good. And I'm just going to give that a, a minute to settle. Then I'm going to um, lift the jars out with my lifter and put them right here. So before I do that, I want to talk about the importance of putting down a towel. If you have a counter that you believe is indestructible and you want to put your jars down directly on it, do not do that. This isn't so much about protecting the counter, it's about protecting the jars from shock. So they've just been in this boiling hot water, 212 degrees, and if you take them out and put them in direct contact with something that's hard like granite or marble, and it is cool or cold in the case of marble or concrete or whatever you have and that jar changes temperature quickly what happens is is the whole bottom can like uh, the whole bottom can crack like there'll be a crack that will appear all around there you'll hear it you'll pick the jar up and the whole bottom will fall out so remember to put a towel down it's to help prevent shock it has really it protects your counter too but it has less to do with the counter protection, more to do with shocking. All right, so I'm going to just lift these out. Don't tilt the jars when you pull them out. If you do, you can release the seal. I do it sometimes because it just feels good sometimes to get the frickin' water off there, but I can use a towel. So you'll see there's still some boilage going on in here and you can hear some of them are sealing right now. It can take up to 24 hours for a jar to seal. They almost always seal in about the first 15 minutes if they're not already sealed. That one just sealed when I pulled it out. These are old uh, lids that I've had. They're unused but they're not the new style of lids so my success rate should be pretty high. Very quickly, I'm going to take the water off the top. Okay, not sealed, 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 not sealed, sealed, no, not. Now they're sealed, except for that one. Not sealed yet, but we just pulled it out. So it should seal if it doesn't, it goes right in the fridge and just gets eaten right away. So. Um, these jars are a little lighter. This is my uh, relish from a couple years ago, from 2018. And so this will darken in time. It will get um, nice and dark to this color. Or maybe I used more red pepper in there. Or maybe I put turmeric in or something. Who knows? But I think it will, it will darken. But anyway, it came out very nice. It's beautiful. And it's an easy way to use up a lot of produce. And it's good on a hot dog or a hamburger.